And that's what this is, you guys. It's, it's trial and error. A lot of times it's experimenting and then trying to determine the feedback that you're getting from your body. Not everybody's journey is linear. Not everybody's journey is a 30 day transformation. Sometimes our bodies are doing some kind of deep healing that maybe we don't even know about. And that's kind of how I feel. All right, everybody, January is over. It's officially the end of World Carnivore Month. And as most of you know, I've been on the lion diet for January. I did this challenge for a few reasons, which I'm going to recap in this video. And then I'm going to talk about what I experienced, what I experimented with, and what I'm going to be doing moving forward now that the month is over. So if you did anything special for World Carnivore Month, I'd love to know about it in the comments. And every week on Sunday, we discuss a lot of these topics, and I like to hear from you guys more intimately in our Sunday live streams. They are 10 a.m. Central every Sunday, and I throw up a poll of the week sometime during the middle of the week prior to that to get some input from all of you. And so this Sunday, I'll be going live again at 10 a.m. Central, and we'll be talking about some of this stuff. But for today, I just want to go over my experience on the lion diet, and I'll start with just recapping the reasons why I went lion in case you're kind of new to my channel and haven't seen any of my previous update videos. This will give you a little bit of context. So I come from a background of digestive problems, which are mostly in remission now, being on the carnivore diet for my second round. But I still have some inflammation related things that I do struggle with. I have a little bit of gutate psoriasis. I have a patch on my knee that loves me very much and doesn't want to go away. And then I have a few spots on my face that will, one's right up here on my scalp line, that love to just come and go. They look like they're going to fade away completely and then they just flare back up. So I decided to go lion mainly for that reason to see if I could clear up my skin by removing some of the stuff that I was eating but also energy is something I was really struggling with. I was feeling very tired still most days and I was relying heavily on caffeine and coffee intake to get me through the day and so I really started to wean myself off of caffeine onto decaf for the most part up until the end of December and then I decided to rip the band-aid off for January and and try to go 31 full days without coffee, no stimulants, caffeine of any kind. The third reason, or I guess I should say the third thing I discovered and was not my intention going in was that butter might actually be affecting me. So I started out the challenge with butter included. So I was just doing ruminant meat, beef only with salt and water and butter because I didn't think butter was doing anything to me, but I discovered otherwise potentially throughout the last few weeks. So I'm gonna talk about that. And then the fourth reason I did it was just to do something hard, just for the sake of doing it. Doing something hard just helps increase your own self-confidence, your own sense of self-worth by making a promise to yourself and then following through with that and sticking with it, even if it's difficult. So for all those reasons, I wanted to embark on a lion diet journey. And so thanks to everyone who has been keeping up with the weekly updates and leaving your input below. I really appreciate that. So how did I do? What results did I get? Well, I would say for the energy department, I did notice significant changes. I had a theory that part of my energy issue was this reliance on stimulants and that I have some sort of adrenal fatigue or some sort of hormonal imbalance that is just causing me to be incredibly tired. And then adding these stimulants is just kind of like kicking my adrenals in the butt and it's not allowing me to move forward. And so I did slowly and gradually notice that my energy returned on zero caffeine. So that's something I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna continue with no caffeine. I did, however, add decaf coffee back in on a limit because I was drinking a lot of decaf still before in December upwards of a pot a day. And then a lot of times in the afternoons, I was still adding in just a little bit of the caffeinated stuff that I still made for Ben in the mornings just to get over that afternoon hump. So I was like really consuming little to no caffeine, but I was still drinking a lot of that decaf and a lot of cream in my decaf. And so that's where I'm going to kind of employ the quote unquote moderation with this and allow two cups of decaf back in for the sole purpose of upping my fat by adding some ghee to that. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about fat. But I don't think that the decaf really is doing anything negative. We'll find out, of course. But 
Um, I think that that's probably something I can handle as long as I keep it really fatty and keep the cream out. Along those same lines, I've noticed some changes in my sleep. I kind of had some ups and downs with that depending on how energetic I was during the day throughout this month. And I'd say overall, the trend is going up, but I still do struggle with sleep a little bit. I wake up several times throughout the night on most nights, I would say, and I'm not in a perfect routine of going to bed at the same time and getting up at the same time. I've had very varied energy levels throughout the month. And on the one hand, it's really good because it leans on the side of having more energy. So I would get kind of tired in the afternoon when I normally would at between like 2 and 5 p.m., but I would push through and then I would get a second wind in the evening, which was not typical for me. I'd usually stay dead tired until bedtime around like 8 or 9 o'clock at night, but I found myself getting this second wind where I'd be able to stay up till 9 or 10 o'clock doing things and not even really feel that fatigued, and then it would be a little bit harder for me to go to sleep. But that's where I use the self-hypnosis, and I talked about that in other videos. If you want me to talk more about the self-hypnosis, let me know in the comments for sleeping. But that really, really helps me get to sleep if I'm kind of struggling where I'm not super, super tired. But then on the other hand, sometimes I wake up early, like around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, which right now is a little bit early if I'm going to bed at 10. For the vast majority of my life, I have always needed closer to 9 hours of sleep to feel rested. But I was also also not very healthy for most of my life. My gut was really messed up and my energy was really affected by that. So maybe I'm just actually normalizing the amount of sleep that I need, or I should say optimizing the amount of sleep that I need, but it's not consistent. I don't wake up at the same time every morning and I don't go to bed quite at the same time every night. So that is something I'm going to continue to watch and work on with other lifestyle habits that affect that because most of that stuff is other things, right? It's if I get my kid to bed later than she's supposed to, if I've been on my phone too long in the evening, that affects if I'm able to fall asleep, if I had stress that day, or if I didn't do as much activity, like there's all different things that could affect that. So just something I'm keeping an eye on, but I am noticing a, an improvement for sure. Digestion and skin were really the other things that I went into this challenge looking to consider. I really wanted to see an improvement in my psoriasis. And unfortunately, as of now, I haven't really seen much of a change, maybe a little bit better. But like I said in the beginning, I feel like there will be three, four, sometimes five days where everything's looking really good and then I'll just kind of randomly get a flare up. And even being very consistent on the lion diet, I noticed that still kind of happened. It fluctuates around my cycle when I begin um, my period versus you know where I'm at in that cycle. And so again, I feel like a lot of this is hormonal and I'm working really hard to try to balance that. And that's what I'm going to be doing moving forward into February. Also, it's winter right now. And even though we live in North Texas, I'm still not getting out and getting a ton of sun on a lot of exposed skin like I was over the summer and fall. And so I know being in the sun makes such a huge difference for me. That's why I started supplementing vitamin D this month because I thought I just miss the sun so much. And that's what my skin responds to best in terms of healing from the psoriasis. So I'm really looking forward to February. It's not going to be you know, obviously that hot out yet, but it's warm enough here where I can probably get outside in some shorts on a sunny day and get more sunlight. So I'm really excited for that. I did also feel like the butter could definitely be a contributor to my skin flare ups. And the more I'm reading again and getting into the work of some other people like Dr. Elizabeth Bright, the more I feel like dairy in all forms, at least in butter as well, should not be a part of my diet right now, which is sad. But if you saw my last weekly update, I did make some ghee at home and I think I'm doing okay with the ghee. So that's what I'm going to be putting in my decaf coffee, like a couple good teaspoons, maybe good tablespoons of ghee, just to really start upping my fats and see how I do with that. Digestion also had some ups and downs. I mentioned in my weekly updates that I did experience a little bit of constipation, I think in the first week, and then I did again in this last week, and it's because I was not e eating enough fat. I ate more steaks than I normally would this month, and I wasn't getting all ribeyes. I was just kind of buying what was on sale, and so I think 
for a few consecutive days, I got a little bit leaner than what I should have since I cut out the butter mid month and I was eating a bunch of butter in the first part. And then I wasn't just didn't have enough tallow or enough fat on that meat to get high fat enough. And so I've been researching some things that I can do that aren't butter to add to my diet to really make sure I get that high fat. And again, I mentioned Dr. Bright. I've been digging back into her work and a lot of the things she says resonate with how I feel with just the adrenal fatigue and just feeling like my hormones are out of whack. And so I really want to try to up my fat. So I'm going to include ghee for the month of February and tallow. And then I'm going to start doing some roasted bone marrow. And if I can think of anything else good, that's really just ruminant based, then I'm going to try to add that as well. I'm getting the 73% ground beef now, which is extra fatty. And I'm going to be tracking my macros. Yes, tracking for the month of February because I just want to get in that ballpark. I'm not going to be very super strict with weighing every single thing that I eat, but I do kind of want to know exactly where I am. Like, am I in the 80% fat to 20% protein ratio or not? What can I do to adjust it a little bit so that I can get maybe my protein a little bit lower and my fat significantly higher? I think that's what I feel like I need the most is just more and more fat and seafood. I had crazy cravings for seafood this month, you guys, and I mentioned it maybe a week back. I've had dreams about eating seafood, like eating oysters and shrimp and stuff like that. So I actually did quit on the 31st yesterday. I sort of broke my lion fast, so to speak, with a seafood meal. So I had a half dozen raw oysters and I had about a pound of snow crab legs. And look at how much seasoning they put on this stuff, you guys. I had to wipe it, brush it, try to eat around all that seasoning. So, you know, I, it sort of counts as a cheat meal, I guess, in some ways, but I enjoyed it so much. And I felt like specifically the oysters, I could have just eaten like two dozen of them. They were so good. And so I don't know if that has to do with me cutting out the iodine that I was supplementing in my coffee during December. I was doing some Lugol's drops in there or if it's just something else in the seafood that my body needs, but I'm going to kind of go with that for the month of February. So I'm going to leave the chicken and pork out for now, leave the dairy out for now, keep the ghee, keep the tallow, add some bone marrow, and then add some wild caught salmon, some anchovies, which is a fish that I know I really like. And things like scallops and shrimp just sound freaking divine to me right now. So I'm just going to kind of go with that into February and see how I do there. And then I'll be letting you know as I track kind of how I'm doing with that and a visual of what I'm eating so that you can see what the macros look like. I think that's gonna work best for me because I'm not a huge fan of tracking, but at this point I do want some more data. I do want some more information so that I can tweak things a little bit and then see how I improve. So that's kind of a wrap for the month of January. And that's what this is, you guys. It's, it's trial and error. A lot of times it's experimenting and then trying to determine the feedback that you're getting from your body, track things, but not get so obsessed with the tracking that it triggers you or turns it into this thing that becomes really restrictive and unhealthy in that sense. Oh, I didn't talk about joint pain. Okay, real quick. I've been having joint pain in my knees and it's been on and off and I've stopped exercising partly because it was just maxing me out. I would exercise and then be on the couch for the rest of the day. I could not tolerate any exercise without being completely wiped, which is another reason why I think I have some kind of adrenal fatigue. But I've been adding in some really simple, low impact, low intensity exercise like yoga, just doing some random little things at the park and just playing basically. But my knees will ache and my knees also the place I have the psoriasis. And so I'm kind of thinking like, this could be an oxalate thing. This could be some sort of inflammation that my body's working through. I'm just going to give it time. I'm going to keep tweaking things here and there, talking with you guys about it because that's what really keeps me going is this community and how amazing everybody is in this community and how willing everyone is to help and share their stories and what worked for them. And so I hope I was able to encourage you as well to keep going because not everybody's journey is linear. Not everybody's journey is a 30-day transformation. Sometimes our bodies are doing some kind of deep 
healing that maybe we don't even know about. And that's kind of how I feel just to wrap this up at the end of the month. I was feeling down at certain points thinking, man, you know, I have to give up all this stuff. What is going on with me? Why am I not responding to this like I did the first time? The first time I was on Carnivore, I felt freaking fantastic, but I was still drinking alcohol. And so that's the difference this time is I'm not drinking alcohol and now I've cut out the stimulants too, you know, the caffeine. And so it's like, I should be feeling better, right? But for some reason I'm having a little bit more of a struggle, but I trust my body. I trust my intuition now more than ever. And that's given me a lot of peace and a lot of yeah, just peace around not stressing about when I'm going to heal, when this silly spot's going to go away, when I'm, my joints are going to feel perfect. And so we're here, we're in this together. We're rediscovering what it is like to eat like a human, to eat the proper nutrition that's going to improve our health and our sense of well being in a really dramatic way. And so I thank you all for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye.